discussion and will be on the differences between simple or traditional based costing and an activity based costing system. So let's first look at a simple example here. We have three roommates, David, Matt, and Brian, and they're currently sharing all the cost of living together equally at $900 per month. But they're not all participating in the activities of living together equally, like eating, watching TV, and using the internet. So the three roommates called a meeting to discuss the allocation of these costs to each roommate. And here in this spreadsheet, you can see how those costs or how each roommate is using up those activities. Some are not using any of the activity, but yet they're getting charged for those activities. So it's probably not a fair way to do this. So this is our first little look at the difference between a simple costing system where we just split the cost equally and, actual, and, an, and an actual activity-based costing system where it's more accurately placing cost with the users of those costs. And this, of course, is called an activity-based costing system, which allocates cost based on the activity that causes the cost. The goal of activity-based costing is to allocate those indirect costs more accurately to our jobs so that we can get a clearer picture of what each product costs to manufacture. This allows our managers to make better decisions for our company. So let's look at this simple DVD manufacturing company here. And we have panel A, which is a traditional system, and we have panel B, which is an activity-based costing system. So let's first look at panel A, which is our simple or traditional costing system. So we start with our manufacturing overhead, and we want to allocate this overhead to our products. So as we know, we currently pick a, an allocation base. In this case, we have picked direct labor cost to be our allocation base. And we're using direct labor costs to allocate all of our manufacturing overhead to our Excel DVDs and our specialty DVDs, which are our products. But one or more of those products may not use direct labor costs as the true cost driver. So we may not be getting a true look at what each one of those products are really costing us. And one may be subsidizing the other, which we'll get to in a later conversation. And if we look at the ABC costing system, we are going to take manufacturing overhead and then we determine activities that our products go through. Here we've determined that each DVD goes through setup, DVD burning, and case assembly. And in this case, each product went through each activity. There may be some times where one product will go through two activities and the other product may go through three different activities. But in this case, both products go through all three activities. And then we have a cost driver for each activity. And you'll notice that cost driver does not necessarily have to be the same thing for each activity. For setups, we determine the cost driver is number of batches. For DVD burning, we determine the cost driver or the cost or the um, allocation base for DVD burning is the number of machine hours. And for case assembly, we determine that the number of inserts were driving the cost there. So let's look at an example. We have Blake and Roscoe. They're college friends. They're planning a skiing trip to Aspen before the new year. And they estimated the following costs for the trip. So they think they're, that their, estimate, their total estimated costs are going to be $1,210. $600 being for food, $210 being for skiing, and $400 being for lodging. And they determined that there's a cost driver for each one of these activities. For food, the cost driver is pounds of food eaten. For skiing, it's number of lift tickets. And for lodging, it's the number of nights stayed. Well, Blake suggests that the cost be shared equally. So we're going to calculate the amount each person would pay if we shared the cost equally. So to do this, we're going to take the total estimated cost and we're going to divide that by the number of products. In this case, we're talking about people because people are using up these costs. And we have two people. So the amount that's going to be allocated to each person is 600 
and five dollars each. Well, Roscoe may not think this is very fair because he plans to stay in the room and not ski. So Roscoe suggests that each type of cost be allocated to each person based on the cost driver listed above. In other words, we're going to use an activity-based costing here. So using the allocation for each person, calculate the amount that each person would pay based on his own consumption of the activity. Well, the first thing we have to do in activity-based costing is we have to determine a rate. So part one is to calculate the rate for each activity. So the first activity was food. The total cost of the food, the total cost was $600. And if you look up here, we said that, or Blake anticipates eating 20, 20 pounds of food, and Roscoe anticipates eating 30 pounds of food. So we want to know what the total amount of food is going to be. In this case, it's going to be 50 pounds of food. So we're going to come back down here, and our food is going to be the $600 divided by the estimated total amount of food eaten, which is 50 pounds. That will give us our allocation rate per pound of food, which in this case is $12 per pound. So for each pound eaten by Blake and Roscoe, they will pay $12 in cost. We're going to do the same thing for both of the other two activities. Skiing, we see that our cost for skiing is going to be $210 and the total amount of ski tickets is 3. 3 plus 0 is 3. So 3 tickets. We find that our rate per ticket is $70. And the last activity is lodging, and we determined that that estimated cost was going to be $400 total for the trip, and each person is going to stay two nights for a total of four nights. So we can find that our allocation rate for lodging will be for, would be $100 per night. The second step is to allocate the costs to each product. In this case, our product is people. So we have Blake, and we have Roscoe. For food, Blake, if we go back up here, Blake is going to eat 20 pounds of food. So we're going to take our rate which we determined to be 12 pounds, or $12 per pound. So $12 times his 20 pounds of food. He is going to cover $240 of that cost. Roscoe, so we keep the same rate, it's still $12 per pound. Roscoe is going to eat 30 pounds of food. So the amount of cost allocated to him for food will be $360. We move on to skiing. Our rate for skiing was $70 per ticket times 3 is $210. Okay, and Roscoe, our rate is still $70 per ticket, but he's not going to buy any tickets, so his cost for lift tickets is zero. And our last activity is lodging. And we determined that our lodging rate was $100 per night. And if you look back up at our spreadsheet information, we see that each person is going to stay two nights each. So each person will cover $200 in lodging costs.